Hi, my name is Siddharth Sunil and this is my submission for the reflective practice video. My reflective practice is on the student placement that I'm doing right now at the Twickenham Rowing Club where I am the lead SNC for the Twickenham Junior Squad. It is my job to design and implement a long-term physical development plan in the gym for the 16 to 18 year olds. And the gym sessions run on Mondays and Wednesdays in the evenings where I'm also supported by two, three other coaches. I would like to start off this reflective practice by talking about the physical assessment that was carried out by me for the Twickenham Junior Squad. Since I was handling a cohort of 25 kids, there was no time to create a bespoke template for each and every kid. So I had to create a generalized movement screen which ticked all the boxes so that I get, a, get an understanding of where they stand from a movement efficiency point of view and from a basic muscular strength and endurance point of view. Since I predominantly come from the world of personal training with SNC qualifications and with my background where I've worked with athletes predominantly on a one-to-one -one basis, I am more suited to writing bespoke fitness assessments for each athlete. Now, after coming here and getting, my, getting the job with a rowing squad where I had to conduct a physical assessment for everybody on the go, I had to change the way I went about conducting a fitness assessment plan. I had to simplify it and I came up with a quick and efficient movement screen to get the process started. So after conducting the physical assessments for the juniors, I developed a long-term physical preparation plan till the month of June, where the program saw a linearly periodized approach to performance. I programmed the sequential development of neuromuscular abilities starting off with a three-month window to maximize movement efficiency, followed by a three-month window to develop hypertrophy, then moving on to, a, to an undulated three-month block for the last phase, where I would work concomitantly on strength and power. Even though on paper, a linearly periodized program makes sense for junior athletes, the problem came in the execution where there was a lot of shortcomings with regards to implementation of this program. My rationale and thought process behind designing such a program was I broadly categorized the entire cohort as developmental athletes and I chose to come up with a plan that would be carried out regardless of their competitions calendar. So my thought process was I'll get them ready by June for Henley. So the whole premise behind coming up with such a plan was that I was told that these kids had never undergone a rowing specific strength and conditioning program ever before and this was going to be their first one and but the mistake that I feel as an SNC that I made was I did not take into account the physical literacy level of the cohort because there were differences visible amongst the cohort itself when it came to movement when it came to movement quality movement efficiency when it came to strength and endurance levels there were kids who were who were already playing rugby, there were kids who were playing football, there were kids who were doing ballet and this crowd already had good enough levels of movement efficiency while some were lagging. This was evident during the fitness assessment but regardless of that and because of some sort of confirmation bias that I have with regards to training a developing athlete, I wrote a long-term physical program which applies to all of them and I feel that's where I made a mistake. So what you see here is a template of the kind of program that was going to run between that could have run between October and December of 2022. Now, as you can see, it is a very basic regressed program with the, mostly with the use of dumbbells and kettlebells. The plan was to not touch a barbell at least until December so that all the kids can maximize movement efficiency. So when we kicked off this program initially, the biggest flaw reared its head within within three weeks of starting the program itself and that was we stopped seeing progression in pretty much the entire cohort the reported rpes dropped at a very significant rate to a point where the rps were similar to what would be reported during a warm-up or a very light effort movement efficiency did improve for the first two weeks but it only took two to three weeks for the relatively physically less capable individuals to catch up with the ones who had good movement literacy. So the purpose of this program was achieved in three weeks as opposed to the planned three months. And it came to a point where the kids were starting to get bored in the gym. 
and the program was getting monotonous and stagnation was clearly seen. So after three weeks, it was back to the drawing board for me and I decided to overhaul the entire training program and I took a more undulated approach to the periodization itself. So I started programming exercises and training modalities to improve every single biomotor ability within each mesocycle. So I would have elements of ballistic work, I'll have elements of heavy work with intent, I'll have elements of tissue work and whatnot to maximize adaptations and also to induce adaptations at a faster rate so that I can bring about performance changes at a faster rate simply because the kids were now ready with good enough amounts of movement literacy and they were just physically prepared to handle a more intense form of training. So to give further context and to shed some light on how exactly the program changed because now the focus was targeting several biomotor abilities simultaneously. The program would change every three weeks with there being an alteration in load, volume, intensity and pretty much any training variable to induce adaptation without stagnation over the long term. So with regards to the new program and its exercise selection and implementation, the focus was kept on lifting with intent, making sure that whatever load was on the bar was moved with the intent of moving it as fast as possible to maximize neuromuscular adaptations. And on top of that, I did include some plyometric work to work on some stretch shortening cycle characteristics because I felt the entire cohort was could be more proficient in developing that particular ability. outcome of a program like this was very satisfactory to say the least because the entire cohort was showing improvements at rapid rates and they were constantly improving through every training block like there was very little stagnation and on top of that they were enjoying the program a lot more which did wonders for program adherence. I also brought in load monitoring measures such as reps in reserve so that these athletes could have an idea of how hard they're supposed to work so that they so that we make sure that training induced adaptations do occur simply because they work hard enough and when you look at the literature surrounding periodization and comparison of periodization models there is evidence to show that a degree of undulation in a program has shown to induce greater training related adaptations while also sustaining it for a greater period of time without stagnation and by principle uh, what i adopted was a version of the conjugate system which initially was mentioned by Dr. Yuri Varkoshansky in the book Super Training. So I base my programming off of that and I have seen a fair bit of results. Four, that's it, look straight. Five, lovely. to summarize my reflective practice i need to go back to the confirmation bias that i had mentioned earlier with regards to training youth athletes now this has stemmed out of my years of practice back home in india whenever i work with young athletes i would almost always develop a very structured linear protocol as a periodization model for athletic development and more often than not it has worked in the past but however Ever since coming here and working with the squad at Pickenham Rowing Club and being exposed to a different population of adolescent athletes where they have already been in pursuit of multiple sports and a lot of their motor skills has already developed with a varied skill set, I had to learn to break out of this confirmation bias and come up with new ways of programming for the adolescents which in many ways is programming that I have not used before for those athletes and this is my reflective practice it's about breaking a confirmation bias and adopting a new way to deal with the adolescent, adolescent population based on their varied skill sets and that was a summary of my reflective practice and there's definitely a lot to take away for me as an SNC coach for the Twickenham Junior Rowing Squad and I hope to refine 
the program as the year comes to see even greater results. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Cheers.